Welcome to the life of sapuncula, commonly called peanut worms, because of the peanut-like shape they retract into when disturbed. Despite having the nickname of peanut worms, sapuncula aren't actually worms. Their classification is up for debate. They've occasionally been placed in annelida, the phylum containing worms, but they lack important annelid characteristics like segmentation and chitty. Additionally, these organisms have also been thought to belong to mollusk phylum, as sapunculans and mollusks share characteristics in early development, including division of eggs. Even still, sapuncula have shown a possibility of being included within the group Trochozoa, which contains mollusks, worms, and lophophores. Through this data matrix tree, you can see that sapuncula and analyta share the most characteristics. But after looking at the RNA sequences and creating a phylogenetic tree, sapuncula share a most recent common ancestor with Echinodermata and Chordata. According to fossil records, sapuncula may have existed in the early Cambrian era, 520 million years ago. Much of the confusion surrounding how to classify sapuncula comes from sharing many characteristics with worms and alita, but have differences in RNA sequences. The, da the data matrix tree, for example, shows that sapuncula shares many of the same characteristics as worms, yet our 16S RNA tree shows that sapuncula and analita may not be as closely related as they appear physically. Our phylogenetic tree was generated from an RNA sequence, while the published journal article generated a tree from mitochondrial DNA. Because mitochondrial DNA is passed on from the maternal side, while RNA, derived from DNA, comes from both parents, they might produce different phylogenetic trees from different lineages. And here we have two phylogenetic trees, and as you can see, the second tree is the most parsimonious because there are the least amount of changes. In this tree, the spunculas are actually most closely related to the analyta. <laughs> what is known about spuncula, though, is that it is a phylum of bilaterally symmetrical, unsegmented marine invertebrates that have more than two cell layers, but lack circulatory and respiratory organs. Their coelom is actually filled with fluid made from hermethrocytes and ciliary urns. This fluid transports oxygen and nutrients throughout the body. Although one would assume that the before-mentioned tentacles would be a moving force for sapuncula, these tentacles are actually used for respiratory exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Sapunculids are found in waters ranging from tropical tide pools to deep cold water environments. However, all their habitats are located on the bottom of the ocean in an area known as the benthic zone. These creatures can burrow inside objects such as discarded shells, soft rock, large populations of algae, and even whale skulls. Sapuncula are dioecious organisms, meaning that the male and female reproductive organs are located on separate individuals. However, these organs are not distinguishable externally. Sapunculates generally reproduce sexually, with fertilization happening outside of the body, but some are known to reproduce asexually. Those that do reproduce asexually do so by dividing in a process called budding. This involves an uneven split of the body, with each half regenerating what it does not have. The sapuncula that are rep reproduced through sexual means can either go through a larval stage or hatch as an adult. Sapunculae belong to the group of organisms called protostomes, which means that their mouth is the first opening that develops from the blastopore. Sapunculae embryo are lysithotrophic, feeding off only the yolk in their eggs. From there, they can metamorphose into different forms, including a normal worm form or a pelagosphera larva, a small ball-shaped body with a retractable interior body. While sapuncula feeding mechanisms are poorly understood, they are thought to be deposit feeders, meaning that they feed off of decomposing plant and animal matter by using their specialized tentacles. Some members of the sapuncula phylum are also filter feeders, instead using their tentacles to form a crown that captures food particles in the water. It may be shocking that humans consume these creatures as well. 
Even though they may look like peanuts, they're eaten as a jelly and considered a delicacy in Xiamen. So, if you're ever craving a serving of sapuncula, be sure to stop by this town in the Fujian province of China.